Greetings and salutations. This is Abe Abdelhadi with The Bitter Truth, where we may not have all the answers, but we're going to ask an awful lot of questions. You can also become a bitter pill or a spoonful of sugar by visiting patreon.com forward slash The Bitter Truth. You can also catch my Tuesday morning article on the TexasFreePress.com. Uh, not usually in the morning, sometimes it's in the afternoon, but it comes out on Tuesdays. And uh, the last one, uh, I believe, was entitled... Uh, uh, your, 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 your spirit animal sucks. It's a fun little piece. I think you'll get a kick out of it. So anyway, uh, I'm excited. My guest today is a gentleman named Mauro Garza. He was on last fall. Um, he was running against, uh, six other Rep Republicans for the uh, 20th district in, uh, Texas for Congress. Oh, five other Republicans. Okay. Four. Okay. Um, four. And, and he's, he's signaling me as we speak. So <laughs> it's not like I'm so slick. Um, but anyway, for the 20th district of, uh, for Congress in Texas, and uh, the, and now he's in a runoff. We're going to talk about that in a second. But the uh, the the winner of the contest will go to on to face um, Joaquin Castro, who is the incumbent Democrat uh, uh, congressman in San Antonio, uh, not in San Antonio, but the district in District 20th, the 20th district out of San Antonio. And I'm going to shut up and introduce uh, Morrow and get him in here. Morrow, how you been, man? I'm doing well, Abe. How are you? It's hey, I'm really well, man. Listen. Um, Last time you came on, uh, we talked about your race and talked about some, you know, points of view and kind of, you know, chopped it up a bit. And, but, uh, you know, just to kind of remind folks, you're, you're a business owner. You've been in business over 30 years in, in Texas. Um, you're, you're, you're gay, you're, you're gay man. You also, well, are you, you know, uh, I don't really, uh, I don't do identity politics. Well, it's not identity politics. It's what you are, right? I mean, you're, you're, you, you, you are of a certain heritage or you're not, you're Jewish. Oh, that's for sure. I'm Jewish okay. for sure, yes. Okay, so, and I ask all that because, you know, you're running as a Republican, and these are Absolutely. things that are not usually, so it's not about identity politics, like I want anybody to feel sorry for you and vote for you because you're, you, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But the, but these yeah. are things that, you know, I mean, um, you know. Right, do a little research and you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the thing. You, you also, you, you also, in addition to many other businesses, several businesses, in fact, you also own Pegasus, yes. which, which which is the one of the top 10 largest clubs, uh, gay clubs in the United States and also one of the largest, most popular, uh, in, uh, in the U S yeah. Hey, you're you lucky. You're on the top 10 list of the, right. Of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and definitely the biggest club in Texas. And so anyway, that, that being said, um, you were running, you were running last fall against four other Republicans and now you're down to a runoff. Um, how much of a tie was it for it to get to a runoff? Well, uh, I, I think it was about, a ooh, maybe a thousand votes, uh, difference. Uh, okay. So one of the things, Abe, that we were able to do is, uh, is uh, we were able to knock on about 12,000 doors. Um, now, uh, that got us to be in the runoff. So we got the, in this particular race, we got the highest vote uh, for early, from, from early voting, right, which was a two week period. Uh, and then we also got the highest number of votes in my race. Right. Um, for absentee, which could be military, so forth. Sure. And then on March 3rd, uh, the primary election mm -hmm. day, we got the highest amount of votes for that day as well. Okay. However, not enough to avoid a runoff. Okay. Okay. And the gentleman that you're um, that you're facing the contest with, uh, um, it's it's in July, correct? Your election. Correct. Now we have early voting. Uh, well, it, initially. Because it's a runoff, it was going to be March 23rd, but then comes COVID. Right. And so it moves on further to uh, July 15th, uh, 14th would be election day on a Tuesday. But the week, the week before will be early voting. It's like okay. a mini primary. Uh, you, instead of two weeks early voting, you get one week early voting. Okay. So that would be from July 6th through the 10th. Okay. Uh, early voting and election day would be uh, July 14th. Okay, and then um, the 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 lady or the and I'm and I apologize for not following your race as closely as I should have been. Um, who are you running against in the runoff? I'm running against Joaquin Castro. Is my focus right? But uh, it, but you do have a runoff. So who's that, who's that? Yes, uh, I, the, uh, I believe his name is Gary. Gary okay. Allen. Something. Gary Allen. Okay, and um, and you know this is you know the reason I'm asking. So obviously <laughs> it came close, and you guys are now contesting each other. What makes you what makes you your platform better than his to represent the Republican Party? Well, there are several things, um, Abe, that makes it better. Uh, the first thing has to do with the actual resources to be able to, <laughs> to beat Joaquin Castro. Mm -hmm. um, 
the, that's one thing. But uh, you know, I, I I am focused on my um, my goal is to protect Texans and their money uh, by cutting taxes and um, uh, putting an end to all this wasteful spending. I've identified so many areas of wasteful spending that I'm really uh, troubled uh, about. Uh, I also want to continue to defend our constitutional rights along with our Texas values. I, the other thing I am focused on is to keep America safe and secure. Now, by that, I mean I would do what I can to ensure that our military and the first responders, as you see how important they are, um, uh, hopefully uh, become fully funded. Wait, wait, okay, let's separate in a few sections. You're talking about first responders or the military? Because the military spends a, a trillion to them a year. They, they're funded. Uh, so you're talking about first responders now? Well, both of them. To me, to keep America safe, we have to do both. We have to figure a way to get the bu- budget to where we can eventually uh, uh, fully fund our military and, and our first responders. Okay, but let me ask you. But here's the thing: we we've border given. Responder, hey, let me let me be clear. Could be border security. Uh, that's, well, that's my question. I mean, that's that's separate from the defense budget, though. The defense budget right now, in the last three years, this Congress has given Donald Trump 130 billion dollars more than what he asked for over the last three years. We outspend 20 of our competitors combined. The Chinese had just upped their spend to 225 billion dollars. Mm-hmm. The Russians were at between 60 and 70 for years. About a year and a half ago, they upped their spend to eighty billion a year. We spend one point two trillion. We occupy one hundred and forty nine countries. How much more defense do we need? This is my question. Compared to the first responders, it's, it doesn't seem fair when we lump in, um, uh, you know, first responders in with the defense because first responders, as you said, we need them. Well, perhaps I, I get that. I get that. Uh, I, I guess what I was trying to, uh, I would say on message, you know, I'm like a broken record. I'll always say that this is what I stand for to mm-hmm. make sure they're at least funded to do the job they need to do mm-hmm. uh, for the military. Uh, but in there, I always also group uh, uh, border security. I, I uh, you know, even uh, uh, people that are like uh, keeping us safe, like uh, maybe uh, secu- uh, uh, law enforcement, right, uh, right. fire department, they are uh, many times in uh, a lot of what they do is EMS. And I mean, they come <laughs> in contact with a lot of things. Maybe perhaps uh, they can come in contact with asbestos, uh, the fire department, or they can come in contact with um, uh, viruses, bacteria, those kind of things as well. So we have to be sure that they have the supplies uh, and, right, right. And, and what they need to to keep us safe because sure. I, I believe that the, those, uh, whether you're a military or a first responder, whether um, uh, you're keeping America safe and secure, mm-hmm. and we have to really look at that and and, and make sure they're not, mm-hmm. uh, uh, they, they have the best resources to do the best job that they can. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and... <clears throat> Let's let's toss out defense for a hot second because, um, I mean, I, I honestly, you know, I, I believe that it, that's as funded. We we don't need more money in defense. Um, a trillion two is a lot of money, and it's it represents a big chunk of the GDP. What I what I'd like to see um, hear from you, if you're talking about first responders, mm-hmm. um, because obviously there's counties and cities that you know how much federal money do counties and cities get to fund their first responders, for example. So like Austin PD. Or Senate or Barrett County sheriffs, how, how how much money do they get um, in terms of any federal funding at all? Is that something you can actually do something about? Uh, I may be able to um, to work on if there's something that can help. Uh, I may be able to support that. Uh, it's not <laughs> that um, like you say, a lot of it it comes through the state. Um, now there could be programs that could uh, provide funds for. Uh, for a city or a county, uh, for for these types of um, law, inf- I mean, primary uh, uh, first responder type sure. jobs. Sure. Um, in San Antonio, uh, you know, whether it's a city or county, they're not for first responders. They 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 don't. I I don't think they they do what they can for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And. And perhaps it's because they may not be getting uh, the money, whatever monies 
possibility there would be from the federal. Uh, that, that's a good point because there's not a whole lot, um, I, I believe, available for them at mm-hmm. this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot of it is, uh, you know, county and city. Uh, so, uh, but the county and city is not doing what they can in San Antonio, at least, uh, to uh, to be a friend of our first responders. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm up here in Travis Castro County. Castro is no friend of first responders. Well, yeah, and that's and that's the thing. Like, I'm up here in Travis County, and and you know, my day job, uh, I, what I deal in on a daily basis is employee benefits, that kind of thing. And I work with a lot of in California. I worked with a lot more first responders because you know I was working with the associations, which had more teeth because oh. it was collect, it was collective bargaining in California. Uh-huh. And out here, the associations, I find, you know, like. Like, you know, I'll, I'll just say it, Travis County, the last, the last I heard was a, about a year ago. Maybe this has changed, but they hadn't had a raise in 13 years. See, and that, and so I'm like, I'm like, how, how do you tell me you love your first responders and, and you do this whole, you know, Blue Lives Matter and all this stuff, and then you can't even pay them? Not only that, Abe, but if you think about it carefully, I, I can't understand, I cannot understand how anyone in, in any level of government, whether it's a mayor or a city council person or a county judge, uh, a state representative or, or governor or congressman, U.S. Senate. I can't understand how anyone in government does not understand that public safety is number one. And, and our first responders are in, lead that charge. Sure. There's a fire, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, well, they love, to, they love to talk a good game in public. I don't care if it's a Republican or a Democrat. Look at Andrew I, Cuomo. Andrew Cuomo cut $2.5 billion in Medicaid. He eviscerated 10,000 hospital beds. And now he's on TV every night bitching to Donald Trump. And I don't like Donald Trump. And I'm like, dude, you're, you're, you're a liar. You cut, you cut taxes like a Trump or Obama did to the top 1% of New York State. And now you're on TV saying you don't have any money when you're standing in the way of $7 billion of federal aid because you're having a feud with the president. And you cut $2.5 billion in Medicaid while giving tax cuts to your buddies. So- well, you just hit the nail on the head right there. I'll tell you what, you know, uh, starting to talk about this COVID situation, you know, uh, what we need to do in, in the future is learn. Mm-hmm. We've got to learn. Sure. And there's so many things. Uh, I, I have a list, you know, of the things that we've learned or we should learn that perhaps next time we should never close the economy past four weeks. Never, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. never. This should never, ever happen again. Whether it's a new flu and it just, you know, one, two weeks. Okay. Three. Yeah. Four. I mean, I'm probably like you. We got to know what it is. We've got to get our data. Right. Um, Now, one thing we could learn is, you know, the first, the next time uh, we get uh, data, and I mean, accurate as accurate information as possible, and not sure. from CNN, not from right, 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 Fox, whatever. Right. But the federal government should have a system in place saying, "Hey, folks, this is the accurate data. This is the website. This is where you're going to get the data we've got. This is the data, data, data." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. We have to start thinking for ourselves, right? Everybody's got an opinion, right? So, this is the data. Uh, now, if you want uh, data that may be non uh, or more uh, sensationalized or uh, fear mongering data, or uh, if you want propaganda, go to CNN. Go to these other stations. Right. Well, the stations. That's, yeah, Fox and CNN. Trust me, I, I'm no exactly. fan of I'm no fan of either one. And if you want inaccurate information, possibly inaccurate information, uh, go to your local TV stations. But for the federal government, here's the data we got. But see, let me ask you something really quick, though, because, I mean, you know, Trump cut the CDC dramatically last year. And last fall, this was a bipartisan thing last fall, by the way. These guys knew what was going on, but they were busy trading off their stocks while they're doing the stupid impeachment hearing, which was That's about true. a phone yeah, call. Those, uh, Republican senators, right? Right. And Democrats. I mean, and so yeah, they're, they're, both they're, of them, they're, actually. Yeah, yeah. Both of them. So they're both, they're, they're both trading off their stock when they knew about this COVID thing as, of, as late as last November, December. They didn't, not only did they, you know, 
run around screaming with their hair on fire and tell the president to, you know, budget the CDC. We got, we got to get on this. They didn't do that. And we've been told for 10 years that something like this was going to be coming, even when, 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 uh, when Bush, uh, when Obama was president. So we've been ignoring this. And then we have a Congress that is so bought both sides, they couldn't even bother to let the American people know. Instead, they're doing this theater of an impeachment hearing that I don't, I, I'm not a Trump guy, but what's wrong is wrong. Uh, no, I hear you. And if you don't go after him for emoluments or something real, but you got to make up some stupid thing about a Ukrainian phone call. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, you're going to ignore Joe Biden and his dopey kid, which is like doing Hamlet without Hamlet. You know, <laughs> I, I, I have a hard time. I have a hard, t- like you can't have the impeachment <laughs> hearings about corruption without you know, dragging Hunter Biden's ass in there. How do you get a million dollars a year for an industry you know nothing about in a country you I don't think he's ever been to Ukraine. So all of that to say, how do we how do we reconcile our current system? Everything you're saying makes sense, but I, and, and 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 your party too. How do you how can we reconcile some of these things that you're saying that we need to be on top of, and then still stay ahead of you know the economy? Because I agree with you. I'm not a big fan of closing the economy, but Texas, for example, is number fifty for fifty in testing. And yet we're opening the state up again. The only people we know that have it are the people in the hospital. And so I'm not a big fan of like keeping the state shut down indefinitely. But what about the stuff like you said? We need to know what we don't know before we can move forward. Two mm-hmm. or three, four weeks, that's ridiculous to close the, to, to, to close the country down. But, but what, how, what do we do moving forward to make sure that we don't happen, this, this doesn't happen again? What we do looking forward is uh, it, it's, it's what you do. Uh, you've got a podcast. Um, I myself, am, that's why I asked you some questions earlier on. I, I put myself in an office here at my house. Uh, I'm going to try to, to talk to the, the people in San Antonio and communicate to them directly, uh, if, if I can, with podcasts or being on shows and things of that nature. Uh, because we've got to really, really think twice now, and we've always should have, on who we vote in, the vote is very important. Right. Uh, the people, but but here's what's happening, Abe. Okay, we have um, we have issues. Okay, with, with why I say four weeks. Okay, close down four weeks. Okay, to me, four weeks after four weeks of a closure. Now we are reacting. We are no longer responding. Right. Okay. Uh, so. We have got to, people are scared. They're scared in San Antonio. People are just scared. And this is intelligent. People are scared uh, because what the media is saying, what if, oh my gosh, your grandmother, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, But it is fear mongered. It is hard. It's just, it's but is irrational. It, but, but, it's irrational in a way. In a way. But let me ask you though, but, but, but here's the thing. Like we just, out of five stimulus bills, we gave $7 trillion to the top 43,000 richest people in this country, which is going to allow them like in 2008 to buy distressed assets on the cheap. And you're a business owner. We talked about this last time you were on the show. If Pegasus had an issue, and you guys have probably been closed the whole time too. You have, know, are, yeah. You're know, not getting a bailout. And because it is a, a bar, we're still closed. Uh, they're they're right. sure that other businesses in 25%, 20%. What about the people that depend on this industry for to feed their families? They feed their families. And so, and so instead of the $7, million, $7 trillion we gave these idiots, why don't we do like, like some of the Nordic countries, like, like, the, like Great Britain, for example. They're guaranteeing payroll. Don't lay anybody off. It's cheaper for them to guarantee payroll than to give a bazillion dollars to Jaguar, Right. That's and, right. And meanwhile, Jaguar came to the British finance minister and said, hey, we need a bailout. He goes, great. We get 20% of your company. Mm-hmm. Oh, we don't need the money that bad. Oh, well, then you don't need to ask me if you don't need the money that bad. Right? right. Meanwhile, here, we don't even know if people can you know, feed their kids like you said, right? right. Because people that right. work at your bar obviously make a living, right? Um, yeah. and, 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 and many of the folks in the restaurant business, I mean, that's why they work because they're making a living. And so hairdressers, uh, restaurant folks, I mean, everybody. Yeah, and so, yeah. and so why aren't we, why aren't we doing more for the people as opposed to giving this, for example, you give the money to the people, the money goes in the bank. I don't need to give Jamie Dimon a bazillion dollars to bail right. his ass out again because he did stock buybacks, which tied right, up his right, cash. Right. right. right? Mm-hmm. And now he says, I don't have any cash because the stock crashed and I, I spent all this money on stock buybacks. It's like, well, whose problem is that? Exactly. Let's go back to the stone age and have savings and loans or, or federal or, or federal credit unions. We don't need you. That's I mean, right. so, so, so what kind, what kind of ideas do you have that would rectify that situation? Because right now the Democrats, Nancy Pelosi 
is every bit in bed with those guys as Mitch McConnell. I see no difference between those two, except for gays, guns, and abortion. Those two parties have no differences whatsoever. It's the only thing they talk about. They take money from the same guys. So what can we do to move forward to make sure that, like, for example, there's at least a UBI. And I don't mean like making sure that people don't work. But I'm sure if an extra $1,500 a month was coming into a household during a time like this, there's a little bit of the edge that's taken off. Yeah. And I did the math the other day. It, it, there's, 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 there's 157 million Americans over 18 that work in this country, right? How many? 40, of 157 million Americans over 18. Mm-hmm. If we paid them 1500 a month for 10 months, that's $1.3 trillion. That equals one day of the bank bailouts. So what we're giving them Wall Street and the banks for one day, we can't give to our people for 10 months? Right. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Huh. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I think we we should start by, I mean, we can't cry over spilled milk. No. It's already been spilled. Uh, moving forward, moving forward, what, what are some <laughs> of your ideas to rectify? Because you had some good ideas earlier when you're talking. Well, moving forward, Abe, I think we need to, um, uh, should something like this occur again, the first thing I think we need to do is secure the, uh, the elderly, the nursing homes and the elderly. Right. Uh, it, like you were talking about Cuomo and also the... Uh, I mean, even here in San Antonio, the nursing home, you know, I, I don't know what percentage of the deaths that have occurred with COVID-19 mm-hmm. uh, are related to uh, over 60, you know, nursing homes or just nursing homes. Right. Uh, so now we've learned that, OK, we got this situation almost coming again. First thing is to make sure that nursing homes have the right equipment that people are. You, you got to watch the people going in, whether it's family or not to, you know, make sure, take their temperature, make sure they don't have anything that they could infect an elderly. And then, Abe, I think the, I guess the government should say, hey, folks, this is coming around. Uh, Be sure that if you have an underlying condition and if you're maybe over this age uh, to, you know, take care of yourself, we recommend, recommend you wear a mask. We recommend you wash your hands and do all that. Mm-hmm. We recommend all that. Um, and we also recommend if you've been healthy all along to, uh, to uh, you know, people, okay, the old style of medicine was like this, okay? You go into the doctor, you walk in, the doctor says, I got to cut your leg off, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, it's too late, right? You've got diabetes, you, I got to cut your leg off, Right. Right, right. So the new style of medicine is the doctor, yeah, is there, is going to help you, but the individual is responsible for at least 50% of their health. Sure. So if you've got diabetes in your family, if you if you think you may have an underlying condition, this may be a good time to go to a doctor and say, I need to know if I have an underlying condition mm-hmm. so that I can follow these CDC guidelines or not, you know, and, and then decide to take extra cautions, you know. But uh, I think so. We have to uh, inform people properly and we have to already secure our elderly, the most vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and that's what we need to do. And we need to ensure that there is a way to communicate uh, truth of the information we do have to the people. Sure. And also to communicate to them. It's OK if you don't want to listen to this, but there you can go get other kinds of news at Fox or CNN, whatever, you know, right, right. Uh, those are things, uh, you know, learn about your health. Uh, the other thing we've learned, Abe, and, and, uh, you know, if you get to know me a while, you're going to find a silver lining in, in everything. Okay. The other thing I've learned is that we need to learn to, um, to, uh, medicines and PPE, all, all this equipment. Uh, because securing our country means uh, looking at the, for our, our health and well-being as well. Right, right. So we need to be sure that we are able to uh, make our own aspirin maybe, you know, but we also need to be sure we don't have to pay $100 for that aspirin, you know. Mm-hmm. We have to uh, encourage um, uh, that kind of industry here perhaps create more jobs, but uh, so that we're not at a position where, you know, we, we're at, you know, at another country's mercy, you know. Well, and this is, and these are the, well, these are the deals we've been making last three presidents. Absolutely. And, and Trump has not ramped that back. I mean, we're still, we're, you know, we're still, we're still 
beholden to the Chinese. That's right. He he talks about doing it, and but he uh, hasn't done it yet. And he, you know, and and he hasn't gotten us out of the wars yet, and he hasn't brought back jobs in the United States yet. And so there's all these things that you know, and that Obama did, that Bush did, that Clinton did, and he comes right along. And to be honest, I'm one of the few people on earth. I think I, there's like six of me that my friends. <laughs> I don't see the difference between uh, aside from sending really ugly tweets and doing some stuff that you know. It, but here's the thing. When people talk about Trump and, and they're afraid of him, what they don't want to talk about is that Bush and Obama gave him the dictator's playbook. So when you do Patriot One and Patriot Act Two, when you do the NDAA, when you gut habeas corpus and posse uh-huh. comitatus, and then you leave office and then you let the toddler come in, what do you think is going to happen? It, we have what we have, not because of Trump, but because the system that vomited him up it has been decrepit for years it has. And, and everyone's talking about want to get back to normal. Yeah. You know, it's like, you're right. Uh, uh, many of these issues that we have now is not, they didn't just happen. I mean, many started 40 years ago. Yes. You know, yes. Maybe 50, yes. But, uh, they have, uh, percolated, you know, uh, they have, they've mm-hmm. percolated. And so, uh, for example, journalism, you know, I, I, every, I started talking towards the, uh, before we got to shelter in place, I started talking about um, let's make journalism great again. <laughs> but you and I are, are the same age from last time we talked, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. We're still the same age. I think we're still <laughs> the same age, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we kind of know uh, what it feels like to listen to something and, and just stand back and, and make our opinion of it. Right, right. We, we, we can think for ourselves, right? So one of the things that we've seen, and I've, I've – I was like that for a while, and I, 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 I was. I used to watch CNN, like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But it sort of, kind of crept up that, whoa, wait a mm. minute. Now they're thinking for me, and I'm letting them. That's right. And so I stopped that a, a while back, but um, I've seen it. I've seen, you know, I've seen the uh, the difference. Right, right, and 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 what values and the, those differences, and I see how we are are uh, moving from those differences. But I, I think we can work towards uh, figuring a way to uh, at least bring that back up and not lose it. Right, right, right. Uh, and, and and starting, you know, teaching uh, in education, you know, maybe teaching eight propaganda one hundred and one, uh, journalism one hundred and one. Right. Uh, you know, it, well, let me ask you. Yeah, you can. It's free to have a country, uh, but CNN, you know, or Fox, it's not marketing, right? It's about. Well, it's marketing. all silo. It's all silo. It's all silo rage. It's not. It's not real journalism anymore. It's oh, and and and, 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 and we we haven't had real journalism probably in in a lot of years. But the idea now is like, okay, here's a quick example because I want to move on to your your contest with with Castro in the fall. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Here's 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 a, here's the thing to consider um, when Obama became president. Fox News ratings shot through the roof, right? Sean Hannity and, and Bill O'Reilly became the number one guys in the country, right? On cable. Correct. News. I know what they were doing to Obama, right? And then, and then, but then Trump became president, and then MSNBC became the number one network because all of a sudden the guy that you hate is in the White House. So let's go hate on him, like Orwell said, the two minutes of hate every day. I got to get my two minutes of hate in. So when Obama was president, they went to Fox. Now Trump is president, they go to MSNBC. It's not any different particularly you know they're still sponsored they're both sponsored by Raytheon they're both sponsored by Pfizer they're both sponsored by Euler Packard I mean like 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 Boeing needs an advertise on on CNN because my mother has a group on hanging around for an F-16 that she forgot almost forgot to use it why are they advertising it's bribery you know but um but real quick mm-hmm, um yeah. I want I want to talk I want to talk about your, so okay so you're gonna run against Joaquin Castro in the 20th district let's just let's just that's just you're gonna do it so um what 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 do you bring? What do you bring to your district? What do you bring to Texas that he's not bringing? Well, first of all, uh, uh, he has he he's a follower. I'm not. He basically uh, just whatever uh, they tell him to vote for or not vote for, he will. Right. His his he's a, a an elitist. I believe mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. is about power mm-hmm. and perhaps paycheck. Mm-hmm. I just don't see a genuine uh, concern for leading uh, or actually uh, improving and doing uh, positive things uh, for, uh, well, not just San Antonio, the district, but 
the county, the state, or, and the and the country. Uh, right, right. I'm. Um, uh, I, he, his playbook, of course, it's the normal uh, radical progressive playbook. It's about wait, 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 back up. You, you consider him a radical progressive because I consider him just a corporate hack who does exactly as he's told. And, you know, he's going to vote for Biden and he's going to tell you to vote for Biden and he's going to tell you that Biden's better than Trump. And like, he doesn't seem like a, a radical anything to me. By default. I, <laughs> what do you mean by default? Like you're, well, either, I mean, you're either pregnant or you're not pregnant. You're going to do what the, 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 the four horsemen of the apocalypse and uh, Pelosi want to do. Oh, but they're okay. not radical. They're not radical. <laughs> They're not radical. Telling me, telling me to buy Cobra when I don't have a job is not radical. Okay. Telling me to tell, telling me giving $7 trillion to your buddies while you're standing in front of your two twenty thousand dollars refrigerators, eating $16 a pint ice cream. Like that, that, that's not radical. That's like, you, it's like Marie Antoinette saying, don't let them eat cake. Let them buy the cake. They don't even have any money to eat. You know, it's like, it's just, uh, so when you say radical, this is where I kind of, I kind of t- I take umbrage because I don't consider I consider Joaquin Cash or the typical garden variety corporate hack who does what the pharmaceutical companies tell him to do. Yep. Who he, he, he's voted for some of these shitty bills too. He's voted for deregulating the banks right along with Beto O'Rourke. So, so how is he different than the Republicans? Well, I mean, what I would do is is I this is me, okay? I would I would try to pass bill after bill. I mean, okay. I would try to legislate. First of all, uh, Abe, I really would. I would legislate for uh, on zero. To- this is just my position, okay? Sure, no, that's cool. Uh, a zero tolerance on illegal aliens, illegal immigration. I would legislate towards that, okay? Um, I'm not afraid, and both parties are afraid. I, I know uh, Republicans are afraid. They haven't done it. Well, let me ask you. So, and let, again, just like defense and, and uh, first responders, illegal folks coming in illegally. Mm-hmm. versus asylum seekers. We seem to conflate the two in this country. And there's a big difference, especially yeah. out of countries that we screwed up. We still keep fucking about in Guatemala. We fuck about in Honduras. You know, we arrested Manuel Zelaya in 2009, Democratic elected guy, Hillary, Hillary and Obama, because why? He raised the minimum wage. Can't have that. Chiquita Banana wants a, wants a, lower, uh, a lower overhead. So he was arrested. And, and since then, we turned Honduras into the number one murder capital in the world. They've, got, they've gone through, what, four or five? Uh, quote unquote president dictators, not even elected, by the way, just appointed or, or ramrodded in. So and, so, and, and here's what I'd say to that is that, um, you know, surgery is better than gangrene. Yeah, whatever happened, we've done it. It is time. It is time to differentiate between asylum seekers and illegal aliens. It's time. I think so. It's time to do that, and it's time to legislate towards that. And not, and like you said, fear monger, because you used that term a second ago. Yeah. Um, but, uh, b- people love to ignore the fact that sixty percent of asylum seekers don't. And this has been for years now. This isn't just Trump. Sixty percent of asylum seekers don't get asylum; they get sent back. That's right? right. And yeah. these guys, and these are, and these are folks trying to come in legally, and and, right. and 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 go through the process that's afforded them. And if they make it or don't, they're taking their chances. And yet we treat them like we treat the MS thirteen guys or whatever. Right, we we treat them like we treat drug runners. We treat them like we're treating El Chapo, and that's that's yeah. I know we gotta we gotta work with that. That's not right. I mean, mean, my parents came here as immigrants. My parents aren't from here. They 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 got in easier. It was in the '60s. You know, they they bought green cards in in Brazil, but you know, still they came here you know legally, and and they probably couldn't have maybe gotten denied or whatever. But they weren't illegal in the meaning. They're not criminals. They weren't criminals. They they didn't come here to 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 run drugs or to kill people or whatever. The illegal piece has to be dealt with separately. Thank you. Okay. The yeah. illegal piece does. And uh, I have ideas. I know how to do that. I really do. I, okay. And I'm going and I'm to put them in place. A couple off the top of your head, like what, what are a couple of things you want to do to delineate that? Because that's a great point. You're, you're, the, first, you're the first politician that I've, that I've talked simple. to, by the way. It's yeah. simple. Who's behind the illegal immigration? Well, the, the, the cartels? And the uh, the drug issue, right? We have to figure a way to take the cookie jar away from them. Okay. We take the cookie jar away from from that. I guarantee you, it's not going to be worth their time or money to put people in boxes and send them across or sell people. You know, human trafficking, all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to take that cookie jar away from them, and mm-hmm. and there's ways to do that. Okay. 
All right. Well, then, what are your thoughts on on uh, legalizing marijuana, for example? Because we keep making um, crack and pot a Schedule One narcotic, and then we make we make powder I, cocaine. Okay. We still have powder cocaine a Schedule Three narcotic, which to me sounds yeah, smacks of racism. Enough. It's a fair question. I, I, I'm not for legalizing it. Okay. I am for decriminalizing it, but I am not for legalizing. Explain the explain the difference. I don't want it to say, "Hey, it's legal. Go get it and smoke it in the in, on the sidewalk." I, I just well, we don't, don't drink beer. We don't drink beer on the sidewalk. Some some places do. Well, that's Fredericksburg, but beyond Fredericksburg and Las or, Vegas or Louisiana, <laughs> you know. or Louisiana. Like, I, oh, here's a, my other opinion on that: is I don't want the federal government. It's none of the federal government's business. It's a state issue. Okay, but that's then the feds. But then this, for the Fourteenth Amendment overruns the state. So Texas could be legal up the ass. It's still a Schedule One narcotic. If you're in California, it's legal. Recreation's legal. But if the Fed decided they wanted to clamp down on it, they could. Meanwhile, powder cocaine is a Schedule Three because all their banker buddies snort coke off of strippers' butts while they're passing bad legislation through Alec. So right. this is this is my point when I say, right, you know, right, right. So decriminalizing is we, I, I get we it. want to decriminalize it for sure. Um, and we got to figure a way. What well, you know? What it's not what comes across the border compared to the other drugs, is it? I mean, that's grown here, or is it still uh, smuggled across? I need to do a little research. You know, I I, I know there. I know that I some. I know that a lot is. I mean, El Chapo uh, yeah. was worth like fifty billion dollars. You don't get that playing tiddlywinks. No, but but that was not in in just pot. No, it was, was cocaine it? and heroin and right. everything else. No. Right, right, right. It, but that's what I was separating all that from marijuana. Okay. 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 So yeah. Uh, so it, it's a different uh, way to look at it, but it, it, it will require um, taking a good look at it because uh, again, that's a different issue. That's like people would want to smoke it or I don't know if they want it for leisure or they want it for medicinal. I definitely think it should be 150% for medicinal purposes and nobody should be denied that. 100%. I mean, if, if something, if there is a drug that helps you, uh, a medical condition, you know. Helps you eat. It's yes. better than chemo. You're oh not throwing God. up your guts Epilepsy. all the time. I've heard a lot of things yeah. uh, that it's good for. 100%. Absolutely. That, uh, no issue at but all. But here's the thing, though. But, but here's the thing. We got a few minutes left. You, you, know, you run a bar. You run right. a bar. And I'm sorry, bro. I've been to sporting events. I've been to concerts. It's the old Bill Hicks joke. I'm going to rip him off for a hot second. But if I'm at a sporting event and someone is belligerent and obnoxious, are they drunk or are they stoned? They are drunk. They've been drinking because it's impossible to pick a fight when you're stoned. So it's yeah. like it's, it's so so to, to and it's and it's racist in its nature. How we made pot illegal in this country in the 30s anyway, you know, yeah. because it was during the Depression, and all of a sudden, Belt states, California, New Mexico, Arizona, you know, you had all these workers coming in. They had pot on them. So if you want to bust a Mexican, well. You yeah. make pot illegal. And we still have it as a Schedule One narcotic where cocaine, powdered cocaine is a Schedule Three. I wonder, I wonder if uh, the transport of it across borders illegally has lessened because it's become legal, like in Colorado or those states. And well, and I mean, I haven't, maybe, I haven't. Maybe, maybe that's an example of taking the cookie jar away. Yeah, that, that could be. That could very well be. And listen, I, you, you got, I mean, it sounds like you've got some boots on the ground now, doesn't it? I mean, you got some, you got some yeah. staff, right? Oh God, yes. Okay. Well, listen, man. You know, knock some heads with some of these guys, and you know, you know, g- tell them to get their hands dirty and start, and start to figure out some 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 things. Because here's the these are some of the bullet points that people want to hear. That's because right. listen, man, no one no one is about this red and blue crap anymore. I mean, they yeah. really aren't. I've been that's out of right. it for a that's little. That's right. That's that's right. What we got to do here is uh, here's here's one thing for me to say to you: the primary election uh-huh. and now the runoff. That's the most difficult race for Mauro Garza to win. Okay. That's it. That is the most difficult race for Mauro Garza to win. Those who support Castro are terrified that the GOP, because we're in different parties, right. is going to give me that nomination. Because I'm going to tell you this right now, a winning the runoff, it's not hard. It ain't going to be hard for me to win. Okay, good, good. I like the confidence. Good for you. Absolutely. We're not, we, we got this. We got this. But we have got to uh, earn the, that nomination. 
you know. See, and, no and, other- and that's the thing is, as, as, as you move forward, and I, I would love to have you come back. We're going to start wrapping up here in a little bit, oh, but I would-, I would love to have you come back as, as the race progresses once you win the, once you win the, uh, the, the contest here in July. Um, yeah, and, I, I and want to come back and talk about how it's been going, but also, um, you know, what, what you're going to, what you're going to really do different than, uh, than Castro as you guys develop more of a, a of your platform. I mean, it, it's one thing to, um, and that's the thing too, you, you know, just to be fair, yeah. you're going to be going against a guy who, uh, you know, has enough rank name recognition more than he has accomplishment, right? That's right. So you got to get out there and just really push what it is that you want to get done and bullet point the crap out of it. Cause he can't answer yep. that. And are that's you guys right. going to be, are you guys going to be having debates? I, I'd love to invite him to a debate. I don't think he would accept it, but I would love to. You know, that's, that's BS if he doesn't accept it. Um, you know, but anyway, man. Well, hey, listen. After um, July, yeah, that would be good. Say that again, I'm sorry? After July. You yeah, know, I would love to have you back on, man. Hey, um, Absolutely. But, uh, I enjoy your show quite a bit. Well, thanks. But I appreciate that. And, appreciate, and, and, and you're a good sport, too. I love the fact that you can chop it up and, and you're, you're a good guy. That's, you know, some people, they get real sensitive about that. I don't have too many uh, mainstream guys come on, to, you know, to talk. You know, it, it's what you see is what you get. Over That's here. right. If you don't have you anything know, to hide, you'll come on. I'll tell you what, you, you got to get me to Congress because the first thing I'm going to tell these guys on both sides, it's time to poop or get off the pot. That's right. I wouldn't say that that politely, but okay. <laughs> well, you know what I meant. <laughs> I, I know, I know what you meant. Uh, hey guys, my, my my guest has been Mauro Garza. He is uh, in a runoff for the Republican nomination for the 20th district in uh, in Texas uh, for Congress, and um, he's going to be running against Joaquin Castro in the fall. Um, again, you can become a, a bitter pill or a spoonful of sugar by visiting patreon.com forward slash the bitter truth. I'm going to have Mauro's um, uh, link to his campaign in the body of this show. So if you want to learn more or actually even contribute to his campaign, feel feel free to uh, visit the link there. And uh, it's the first thing next to his name when I, when I post the show. And if this stuff makes you uncomfortable, it's supposed to. Sleep tight. Why?